Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Calls Calls. This is the 2024 RBC Heritage Data Dive Show. Got a fun show for you all. We're going to dig into all of the data for everything Harbor Town and the RBC Heritage players in the field this week, historical performances, and some weather forecasts to get us prepared to optimize our lineups for Wednesday night and to finalize any wagers that we have made. I certainly fired off a couple of names at some um, at some prices that I liked. Um, so, And I also put uh, some research out earlier today over on social media, and I will cover some of that towards the end of the show. But fun show for you all. I'm excited. Let's get into it. All statistics provided tonight and every night are from FantasyNational.com. It is the best golf analytics tool out there for your money. It's going to make you a much smarter golf gambler and a much better golf DFS player, go check out fantasynational.com. You will not regret it. In the description to the video, there are links to all of the social media. First off, my ex and Instagram, where, as I alluded to, I put some research out today around the previous champions of the RBC Heritage at Harbor Town and the players who fit that criteria. So if you want to see the weekly research that I do on the PGA Tour, then give me a follow at your preferred social media site. X is also where I place my weekly betting cards and top player usage in the DFS contests I play. That comes out every Wednesday evening after the DFS Tactics show. And then lastly, for social media, Gabe's handle is in the description. He writes a very good article called The Fringe. It's a great way to start your week of preparation, and he continues to update you throughout the week with his own version of course history, recent form, and all of that. And if you're a subscriber to his article, you're going to be able to join us in his Substack chat every Wednesday evening as we continue the DFS talk after Calls Calls. We talk about game theory, our favorite plays, 6K plays, favorite part of the price board, who we're fading, uh, wor- worriedly fading, perhaps. So all of that, if you want to uh, be in on that conversation, the only way you're going to be able to be a part of that is if you are a subscriber to his article. It is free to do, by the way. And then lastly, we are live. Chat is open. Want to hear from you all. Have you fired off any wagers for the RBC Heritage? Uh, I was pretty close on Scotty's odds, about three and a half to one. I said three to one last night. Uh, The pricing came out. Are you surprised? Scotty Scheffler is at 13,000 with no 5K plays this week. Uh, Nobody in the 5,000s price range. So uh, using Scotty Scheffler looks to be pretty prohibitive. Uh, so if you thought about what you're going to do for that, how do you think RBC or how do you think Harbor Town and the RBC Heritage is going to play this week? <clears throat> so we'd love to hear from you all. So let's dig into the weeds of the data for the 2024 RBC Heritage. And we start, as we always do, on a Monday night, as soon as I get this camera centered, over at the Windfinder Extended Forecast. And I say extended as the super forecast only goes out a couple of days, so we'll definitely have a more detailed view come Wednesday night. But for our purposes, doesn't look like a whole lot in terms of wind. You see Thursday looks fairly calm, maybe a little bit of gusts toward the end of the day, and then Friday, uh, maybe maybe some late uh, rain showers, but nothing too uh, extraordinary in terms of wind. Um, good evening, Tony. Thanks for jumping in chat. It's good to see you. Uh, hopefully your masters went well. Um, you had a futures or even just a flat out outright on Scotty Scheffler. Um, he was my pick to win, but I was not going to, uh, wager him at, at four and a half to one or whatever he was, um, try to beat him, but use plenty of, uh, plenty of him in DFS to a, to a middling result considering I was not on the rest of the top five, essentially. Hopefully your Masters went well, and we are ready for the next signature event, the RBC Heritage. Um, And then, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Sunday looks like the wind could pick up towards the end of the day. So we'll keep an eye on this. But, you know, as of right now, I don't see too much in uh, in terms of wind that would um, force us to, to perhaps look at some wind filters. Uh, which is all well and good. It gives us a chance to just look some more at uh, Harbortown specifically. So there's a look at the forecast, at least the extended forecast. 
uh, as of now, you know, two and a half days uh, out from the tournament. We move to Fantasy National, and let's do a couple of quick recaps here. Uh, we noticed that um, last night in the historic conditions that Harbor Town generally plays to about average in terms of difficulty. I don't see that changing. Uh, it will get difficult if the wind picks up, but I didn't see that in the forecast. So I'm thinking it's just going to play to, to about average level difficulty, especially since there's no cut this year with it being a signature event. So instead, let's take a look at a couple of um, filters that we, we know we're going to be able to use or, or look at. The first being short courses. As even though in the GCSAA tournament fact sheet it listed 7,213 yards, even so, Harbor Town has always, always, always played less than 7,200. So until I see otherwise, even with the unofficial scorecard yardage, I'm going to assume it's less than 7,200 yards. Third place in round four showdown, but other than that, nothing. Well, hey, you know, um, maybe. Maybe that um, got you back to even. If not, you at least accrued uh, or, or wasn't a total loss. So you, so you mitigated some losses with that. So well done. Well done there. You must have had probably Tom Kim. Uh, I'm trying to think who else went crazy low on Sunday. Terrell Hatton maybe. Showdown is something that I have certainly dabbled in. Uh, and some of those shows were fairly popular. It's just it's really, really tough on my schedule. To try and do a week's shows, weeks worth of shows, and then still prep for a for a showdown um, stream or showdown show, uh, it's just tough for me. But if there is enough interest from you know multiple members of the community, I will try to work that back into the schedule. But but well done on your on your podium finish in round four showdown. Well done with that. So the first filter we're going to look at. Let's look at some short courses here. In the past two years, on short courses, um, thirty you know thirty six rounds or two years, our top performers are Eric Cole, Xander, Scotty, Russell Henley, Keegan, Ludwig Ober, Patrick Cantley, Justin Thomas, J T Poston, and Brian Harmon are our top ten in terms of short course performance. You will note that throughout this evening. The Masters has been loaded into Fantasy National, and you can see Scotty's just ridiculous form. Nothing outside of a top 10 the past couple of months. I mean, the guy's just dominant right now. Um, but anyway, so there's a look at some short course filters. This is a Pete Dye design, except for maybe TPC Sawgrass, probably one of his more famous designs. Um, so we can absolutely look absolutely look at peat dye designs. So in the past two years, on those peat dye designs, your top performers are Xander, Scotty, Brian Harmon, Sung Jay, Wyndham Clark, Jordan Spieth, Matt Fitzpatrick, Justin Thomas, Patrick Cantlay, and JT Poston. Um, it's always good to note, you know, Jordan Spieth, your winner two years ago, Matt Fitzpatrick, your defending champion, Patrick Cantlay has played very very well here also at Harbor Town. So perhaps give these guys a slight boost in your considerations for wagers or lineups, considering they typically play peat die designs very well. Nothing to do with difficulty. I don't I just don't like using the average scoring relative to par. And we went uh, or we checked Windfinder at the beginning of the show. Didn't see anything with, with moderate or windy conditions. The only other change that I have for you all uh, is Victor Pari. He did not withdraw per se. He he did not qualify. He was uh, on the border of being in the Aeon Swing Five, I think is what they call it, and he got beat out. So he is in Corrales or at the Corrales this week. So um, technically speaking, Victor Pari is as is no longer in the field for the RBC Heritage that brings us to two players that are not playing, Victor Hovland and Victor Puri. There have been several uh, sponsor exemptions. Gary Woodland, Webb Simpson, Kevin Kisner, 
Eric Van Royen, and there's one more. And I don't want to go through the entire list here. Um, maybe Grayson Murray? I don't know. There are five sponsor exemptions. I know those four. Woodland Simpson, Kevin Kisner, Eric Van Royen, and one other. Uh, Shane Lowry, I think it actually might be, um, was the sponsor exemption. So there's a look at uh, your best performers on short courses, on beat die courses. Um, let's go ahead and just jump straight into um, some of these prior leaderboards. And this is where, dang it, I want 2024, not 2023, stupid. Come on. Um, this is where I am going to look at the camera and say, after doing some research today, I was pretty, pretty incorrect on a couple of things from last night that I kind of harped on throughout the show last night. Uh, so let's go ahead and start talking about uh, the biggest one that I was just clearly wrong on. When we look at these prior leaderboards from RBC Heritage and Harbor Town in the past, off the tee does seem to play a, a pretty decent factor. And I, I kept mentioning last night that I didn't see off the tee playing too much of a factor considering distance just is not a big deal here at all. Now, accuracy is for sure, but Pete Dye much, much more known for uh, iron uh, or uh, emphasizing iron play. Uh, Harbor Town in itself has very small greens, so we took a look at around the green and some putting. But going through these historical leaderboards and then digging into the data behind them, and, and I will show you that data later on in Microsoft Excel, I have to admit, I was just, just wrong. Um, off the tee does look like it will play a decent factor. So speaking of, here are your top 18 from last year's RBC Heritage. And again, not a whole lot of big numbers in off the tee, but what you will notice is that only two players were negative in terms of off the tee, the same amount as in approach. Several players negative and around the green and, and a few players negative in putting. Again, some of these numbers might not be so might not be very large, but other than JT Poston's miscut here, look at the performance if you sort on this off the tee leaderboard, if you will. A couple of top tens. A third, a middling from Colin. Top 15, another middling, a top 10, a top 5. Some more good finishes right underneath JT Poston's miscut. Off the tee was pretty darn solid last year in terms of correlation. Now, Matt Fitzpatrick, our winner, quite a bit lower. Uh, he wasn't particularly great in off the tee, but he was still positive. He just did so much, much more so in the irons. I believe he led the field or maybe was top three or four in terms of irons. Well, okay. He was a little bit little bit lower. John Rom went crazy with the irons. Xander. Look at the look at the irons, especially up here at the top. Top 15, top five, runner up, top 15, a middling from Tony Finau, top five winner. So irons are definitely going to be the emphasis this week. No doubt about it. But I do have to give a Maya Culpa on the off the tee. Around the green, a little bit surprising to me in terms of how little, uh, at least in terms of correlation, it played. Now, you do have much bigger numbers, much, much larger overall numbers in here. You know, you're cl close to a six, a couple of five and a halfs, and a couple of fives. Whereas the leader, the leader in off the tee was only a four and a half. So there was much more to be gained around the green, but it wasn't nearly as correlating. You can see several miscuts towards the bottom of your screen here. I mean, several miscuts. Um, you know, you have a, a Max McGreevy 63rd up here, a couple of more, you know, more middling finishes than elite. Say Denny McCarthy's top 25, Justin Rose uh, top 25, two more middlings. So around the green will play a little bit, but not nearly as much as I was thinking it would last night, considering this, the, the lack of the size of these greens. And off the tee will definitely be a factor. And then putting. Uh, if you're making putts, generally you're going to be rising on the leaderboard. But you see, other than, you know, maybe Jordan Spieth, Patrick Cantley, and maybe Sahit Tagala, you know, these are all middling type, middling to, to pretty poor finishes. 
Taylor Moore, Sam Burns up here as top 15s. But you don't have the direct correlation that you did here like you did with the Irons. So much, much, much more so an approach-based tournament. And we saw that in the in the course breakdown with you know our top 10s and top 5s and winners consistently throughout the leaderboard. 10s, 5s, and winners, the approach outweigh the, the putting. Uh, if we look at 2022, just, just very, very quickly, a lot more of the same. A lot more of the same. A few more players negative in terms of off the tee, but look at their numbers. Negative 2 tenths, negative 1 tenth. Now, Tommy and Harold Varner, they were much more, you know, pretty bad that week at off the tee, but still just a lot of players that were performing well, maybe maybe not necessarily elite, but well off the tee. Again, the leaders were at four and a half. Third, 21st, of, a middling for Brian Harmon. This time our winner was fourth in terms of off the tee. JT Poston was excellent off the tee. Eric Van Royen and so on. Uh, iron play, pretty, pretty darn solid. Second, third, third. Some middlings because they didn't have very good putting weeks. Our winner was still very high in the in the uh, irons. He's going to lead in around the green. That's or be very close to uh, around the green because that's what Jordan Spieth is. But also, again, a, a missed cut second in around the green. A very very poor made cut from our around the green leader, and you know, fifty six from Luke Donald. Uh, good evening, Bro Bearing. Good to see you in chat. Glad to, to see you again. Uh, hopefully you uh, put in a little bit of work on uh, on some research today around the RBC Heritage. Maybe you fired off some wagers. Um, and as I was uh, mentioning, uh, I owed the community and Maya Culpa the off the tee is going to play a decent factor. And we're in the midst of talking about the different strokes gained for the RBC Heritage the off the tee, even though I was mentioning last night that I didn't think it would play a big factor after digging into these prior leaderboards, we'll get dig into the data in Microsoft Excel. I was simply wrong about that. Uh, and I'll give you the reasoning behind um, why I say that. You're on the green, not going to play as big of a factor as I thought. And then putting, if you're making putts, you're generally going to rise. But for putting, this is not, you know, very good correlation. You know, our winner, pretty far down, actually might have been negative in terms of putting. Yeah, minus two and a half and still one. That's just telling you the emphasis on the irons. Now, Jordan Spieth was very good around the green two years ago, but he was also great off the tee as well. So all of that long-winded explanation is to say that um, it, was, it was an error uh, on my part to not look at off the tee. And, and not a mistake I'm going to do again. So we'll look at it a couple of different ways. First off, we'll just look at straight 2024 with no filters, just however they've performed in this calendar year. Our top off the tee players in the field this week, Scotty, Rory, Xander, Siwoo Kim, Alejandro Tosti, Ludwig Ober, Chris Kirk, Sahit Tagala, Cameron Young, and Wyndham Clark are our top 10 in terms of just straight off the tee performance. But what, the way I'm thinking about uh, approaching this is to take a look at off the tee on short courses. Pete Dye does reward um, uh, ball placement. Uh, you have to be in the right spots uh, and talking about a lot of accuracy. So let me just let me remove all these filters and then I'll come back to the short course filter. So in the last two years, or 36 rounds, whichever a player hits first, your top off the tee players on short courses, Corey Connors, Ludwig Ober, Cam Davis, who's played exceptionally well here at the RBC Heritage, Sungjae, Scotty, Colin Morikawa, Cam Young, Siwoo Kim, Russell Henley, and Stefan Yeager, our top 10. Again, Victor Hovland has withdrawn. And if you didn't see at the beginning of the show, Robarian, uh, Victor Puri is also not in the field this week for the RBC Heritage. 
Uh, it's not necessarily that he withdrew. He did not qualify. He was on the border of what they call the Aon Swing 5. Um, ended up getting beat out of his spot, so he is, in, he is at the Corrales this week. So those are the two players to make a note of um, that are not in the field this week for the RBC Heritage. But that's the way I'm leaning, at least right now, on a Monday evening when thinking about off the tee is, is thinking about accuracy, but not necessarily fairways gained. You have to hit certain spots. Um, and Pete Dye is notorious for that, that sometimes, sometimes it's actually preferable to be in the rough as long as you are on the correct side of the rough. Say maybe the right, just to give an, an example, maybe you're in the right rough instead of the left fairway because you can be blocked out. Uh, if you're on the left side of the fairway. Just a, just an odd example there, but um, really rewarding spots. And I think I think that is where a lot of this off the tee is coming into play. All right. In 2024, our top approach players in the field this week, no, no other filters, no short course, just, just flat out strokes gained approach. Tom Hoagie, uh, let's scroll down for you. There you go. It's Tom Hoagie, Scotty, both uh, are tied for number one. Corey Connors, Lucas Glover, Tony Finau, Shane Lowry, Austin Eckro, Akshay Batia, Nick Taylor, and Justin Thomas are our top ten in terms of strokes gain approach in the 2024 season. We'll look at it around the green. Mackenzie Hughes, Scotty Scheffler, Lucas Glover, Xander, Brendan Todd, Siwoo Kim, J Day, Denny McCarthy, Adam Shank, and Taylor Moore are our top 10 in terms of around the green. Now, last night I thought this was going to have a pretty significant um, factor in the mixed condition model, considering these greens are small, greens are hard to hit, so players are going to have to rely on their around the green. I'm probably going to have it still in the mixed condition model, but much more so into the in terms of you know, maybe 5% instead of 10 to 15%. Uh, is how I'm thinking about it on uh, on this Monday evening, knowing that I have a couple of days to think about it and process and then make the mixed condition model. Then lastly, I will bring in the courses that are Poa Trivialis. So we'll start with alphabetical order, Harbor Town, where we are this week. Innisbrook, the host of the Valspar. We need Memorial Park the host of the uh, Texas Children Houston Open, um, Quail Hollow, host of the Wells Fargo, um, the Stadium Course, which is the host course of the American Express, uh, da, 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 TPC San Antonio, TPC Sawgrass, and TPC Scottsdale. So let's apply those course filters. These are all the courses that are consistent on the PGA Tour that have Bermuda Base Poa Trivialis Overseed. Uh, another course that you might want to think about if you can access the specific data to it, the match play. Uh, whenever the Dell match play uh, was a part of the PGA Tour schedule, Austin Country Club also had Bermuda Base Poa Trivialis Overseed. So if you were able to uh, glean any data and insight on some specific putting performance there, you could add it to this list as well. But on the courses that are uh, consistent on the PGA Tour, your top performers on Poa Trivialis Overseed have been Brian Harmon, Brendan Todd, Sam Burns, Wyndham Clark, actually, I'm, I apologize. I need to bring this out to the last two years. Uh, I don't want to go too far back. So in the last two years, yeah, slightly different. Here we go. My apologies. Let's try that again. In the past two years, or 36 rounds, on Poet Trivialis Overseed, our top putters have been Brendan Todd, Brian Harmon, Matt Fitzpatrick, Wyndham Clark, Jason Day, Sam Burns, Thomas Dietrich, Denny McCarthy, Nick Taylor, and Tommy Fleetwood. But again, putting didn't seem to have too big of an emphasis when we looked at the prior leaderboards. So I wouldn't put too much of an emphasis on that, but we will be absolutely looking at a little bit of Poa Trivialis putting uh, this week since we know we're on Poa Trivialis. Okay, 
Uh, let's get this set for fairways and greens. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of this, if I use a filter, is going to be looking at short course. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that um, and get it prepared. Let's look at some driving greens, fairways, and whatnot. And again, off the tee, surprisingly to me, uh, much more of a factor than I gave it credit for. We look at last year's leaderboard, quite a few players positive in driving distance. I don't know how much I really want to put into that because there are a lot of forced layups around Harbor Town. I think it's more so in the off the tee, but really, and this is why I'm looking at off the tee and not just fairways, look at how many players were negative in terms of fairways and yet still top 15. So not where I'm looking. It would be in the greens, at least based on last year. Several, several players, only two players negative in terms of greens gained. If we sort on each particular, um, gosh dang it, each metric, again, a lot of players were positive in distance, but not necessarily to the point where there's a lot of direct correlation. You have a 51st, a 41st, a 63rd, very high in driving distance, 59th. It can help, but that's why I'm just kind of going with the generic off the tee as opposed to isolating any distance because it definitely didn't play a factor last year. And it definitely wasn't fairways. I mean, look, your leader in fairways gained missed the cut. Uh, 54th from Zach Johnson, 41st, 59th. So nothing specifically whether that's distance or the fairways is what's contributing to the off tee. It's just kind of all of it put together. However, what I can say is that the greens, pretty, pretty big factor. Top 20, top 10, you know, pretty bad performance from Victor Hovland. Top five, a middling from Colin Morikawa. Top 15, top five, top 10, top 15, top 15, top 15. Pretty solid in terms of greens. Uh, these greens are not easy to hit, so if you are hitting them, you are gaining quite a bit on the other players, just like you would have been at the Masters last week. We look at 2022 and fairways and greens. Again, even though the leader was negative in distance, you know, a pretty solid run here of, of players who are positive in driving distance. I'm not going to single it out because I just... Again, with all the forced layups that are around here, I don't like the idea of looking at distance. But it's definitely not the fairways. Look how many players are negative in fairways. Quite a few players, you know, negative in, in greens, but negative a half, negative a half, negative a half. Really, only one player was terrible in the greens game. It was Troy Merritt. So if we sort, again, pretty darn solid. Second, third, top 15, middling, you know, fairly middling. A pretty bad performance from Jim Herman, but our winner was high up here. Poston was third. So it's looking like it's the greens is, is the long story behind all that. So our top performers in greens gained on short courses the past couple of years. Scotty. Colin Morikawa, Corey Connors, Rory, Russell Henley, JT Poston, Xander, Akshay Batia, Shane Lowry, and Adam Svensson. Those are your top 10 in terms of greens gained on short courses. And I think that's about the only thing I'm going to look at on this page view. We saw that fairways just aren't a big deal. You could argue good drives, sure. Um... So if we want to look at good drives, Russell Henley and Morikawa, Siwoo, Corey Connors, Scheffler, Batia, Glover, Lowry, Vincent, and Kirk. But a lot of these are pretty solid in both good drives and the greens. So I'm just, I'm just going with the greens gained. But there is an argument to be made that you could look at good drives for it. I, I wouldn't hate that. I'm just leaning more so into the greens. Um, yeah, that's really kind of all I have for, for that page view. I don't like looking at it on Pete Dye Designs. It's a little bit too narrow of a focus, in my opinion. Uh, don't want to use the average difficulty relative to par, so 
Uh, more than likely, I'll just be looking at greens on short courses. Let's go to scoring. Uh, taking a look at last year, and in Microsoft Excel, we saw that the birdies gained were pretty pretty far and away higher than the bogey avoidance. You can kind of see that here, although only one player negative in bogey avoidance, and he was, you know, barely uh, negative. But a lot in terms of favoring the birdies. Now, Matt Fitzpatrick was pretty even. Spieth doubled up birdies gained versus bogey avoidance. Cantley, more birdies. Xander, more birdies. Tagala, pretty balanced, but more birdies. Buckley and Davis, heavily skewed towards the birdies gained. So, in, at least in the top half of your top 15, it was skewed towards the birdies gained. Um, not a lot of eagles. So, eagles do happen, but I don't think it's worth looking at eagles by themselves. We would be looking at birdies or better gained, I think. Now, in... 2022, Spieth um, quite heavily preferred the bogey avoidance because he did not gain a whole lot of birdies at all. But look right below him, pretty solid in terms of the birdies. Birdies, birdies, pretty even but birdies. Cameron Young, birdies, birdies, birdies. Just favoring the birdies gained over the bogey avoidance. Um, now, Spieth gained quite a few eagles in 2022. So made up for his, for his l l relative lack of birdies gained. But um, there's not a lot of them. I mean, Luke List was second in the Eagles gained, didn't make the cut, several missed cuts here. So we're not going to be looking at Eagles per se, just birdies or better, I think is the way to go with this. Uh, we'll take a look at proximity, although I doubt there's anything there. So on short courses, our top birdies or better gained players in the field this week, Patrick Cantley, Eric Cole, Keegan Bradley, Ben On, Rory, Colin Morikawa, Ludwig Ober, Russell Henley, Xander, and Emiliano Grillo. It's our top 10 in birdies or better gain. Also look at opportunities. These greens are so small that if they are hitting the greens, it's almost a, an opportunity uh, by definition, just by default. So your top opportunities gained players on short courses, Justin Thomas, Chris Kirk, Ludwig Ober, Patrick Cantley, Akshay Batia, Corey Connors, Keegan, Matthew Pavone, Tom Kim, and JT Poston. Now, the one time that the Pete Dye filter could come into play, I could I would argue is on scoring. So birdies are better uh, and whatnot, because a lot of Pete Dye designs are set up similarly, even though the green complexes are completely different and whatnot. Um, just the way he plays with eye sights uh, and the lines that you have to take off the tee and, and, and approaching the green are generally pretty similar between Pete Dye designs. So this is one area I could envision perhaps using the Pete Dye filter. So on Pete Dye courses the past couple of years, our top birdies are better game players. There you go. Xander, Rory, Cantley, Scheffler, Finau, Tommy, Tommy Fleetwood, Brian Harmon, Spieth, Poston, and Sungjae. All right, let's get this set for proximity. I'll be removing the filters and just looking at 2024. All right, um, in the course breakdown last night, we saw that especially compared to the PGA Tour average, the majority of approach shots come from 175 to 200. I swivel out of the way there. Uh, a quarter of your shots come from this range, and another, you know, 22 to 23% come from 150 to 175. Even though this is a shorter course, due to the forced layup of some of these um, hole designs, you are left with mid to maybe even longer irons into these greens. Well, more so mid irons for professionals. But, you know, anywhere between 150 and 200. So let's see if that really does um, lend itself to upper leaderboard success. You see, Fitzpatrick last year was really good at the 175 to 200, just kind of middling. But if we, uh, at 150 to 175, but if we highlight, um, nothing really stands out to me. I mean, honestly, the best looks to be the 200 plus and very few approach shots come from that range. 
So I don't want to put a whole lot of emphasis into that. Um, you know, there are a couple of, of players here that are pretty close to field average. You know, negative 18, a negative 4.3 over four rounds is essentially field average. Um, so if we sort... Not a whole lot here. You know, you got some cut making, but then a whole slew of miscuts towards the bottom of the screen. So don't feel great about that correlation. Not a whole lot here either. You got a few more, you know, top end finishes. Top 20, top 15, top 20, top 10s, a little bit further down, but, you know, nothing in terms of, you know, direct correlation. If we look at 2022, Jordan Spieth's win. Again, not, not a whole lot here. Not a whole lot here. Our winner was decent from 175 to 200. Second was pretty darn good from there, but you had several players in negative. It started off strong, second and a third, but then look at the two missed cuts here. A 70th, 69th, missed cut. Just not a lot there in terms of correlation. Some cut making, but... I don't see a whole lot here. So I'll, I will I will show you the top 175 to 200 players because that is the majority of approach shots here, but I'm not going to put any factor into it come Wednesday night for the mixed condition model. But for your information, if you want to value the 175 to 200, I do think that would be the range you would want to focus on. The top 175 to 200 approach players or proximity players from that distance in 2024, Austin Eckro, Cam Young, Eric Cole, EVR, Sebez, Tom Hoagie, Fitzpatrick, Morikawa, Jake Knapp, Ben On, and Adam Hadwin. But again, I'm not going to have any emphasis into this. This is just purely for your information if you want to value it in your thought process moving forward this week. All right. Round out the fantasy national portion with part threes, fours, and fives, and then we'll start really digging in to some uh, to some heavy data here. Uh, par threes, I mentioned that they just don't carry a whole lot around here. You know, Fitzpatrick played them okay. No, you know, nothing spectacular. Two ranges were really kind of it for him. Seventh, fifth, seventh. 11, 15th, you know, it's fine. It's fine, but you still have some pretty poor performances pretty high up here in the uh, par 3 performance. 1.2. Now, lots of strokes gained in the 175 to 200. So if there would, if there was a range, at least from last year, it was this. And if we look at 2022... Par threes, Spieth was negative, 2.2. Now, HV3 was really good. So Straka was really good at him, but they're not ne you know, necessary. Again, our winner was negative in them. The highest one, again, 5.9, 4.9. So if there is a range, and we'll confirm this in Microsoft Excel, if there is a range, I think it is the 175 to 200. Um, but... You know, checking this course breakdown very really quickly, 200 can go to either side. So you can understand that. Now, 217, pretty pretty well clear in the 200 to 225 bucket, if you will. Uh, 192, pretty close, could go either way. And 198, one, uh, 198 definitely could go either side. So you got a lot of par threes that are straddling that 200 boundary um, so interesting to see what Microsoft Excel says I'm just gonna look at par threes for now and if we need to come back I'll take a look at them but our top par three performers in the field this week McCarthy Tom Hoagie Pavone Chandler Phillips Thomas Dietrich Scheffler Rory Kurt Kitayama Matt Fitzpatrick and Emiliano Grillo moving to par fours uh, now, Fitzpatrick didn't play them all that well, although he really dominated the 450 to 500. But generally speaking, par fours are pretty strong here, especially since you have one less par five. Second, third, fifth, 11th, 19th, fourth, 19th, a middling from Adam Scott, 
fifth, eleventh, eleventh, nineteenth. Winner was a little bit further down. Like there's just lots of lots of correlation around the par fours. Uh, the drivable don't want to put too much emphasis on just one hole, so not going to be looking at that. There's only one that measures this range. It's three point seven, somewhat solid, but again, only one hole measures are there. The majority of our par fours measure to this range. And that's where you see Nick Taylor did very, very well, a 9.2. And some pretty solid performance throughout on the 400 to 450. But our winner took advantage of the 450 to 500s. And still fairly solid. Actually, really solid, except for this lone miscut from Stuart Sink. 2022 par fours. Again, just, you got to play them solid. Not a single player negative until you get all the way down to tied for 26th. Um, if we sort on it, you know, third, third, first, second, third. Can't can't emphasize enough how correlating par four performance is, especially here at Harbor Town. Looks like pretty good performance in the 400 to 450. Yeah, 455 as well. So this might be a situation where we'll have to come back into Fantasy National uh, later on in the evening um, to see the specific range. But it's one of these two. I just have to go to the data and, and, and figure out which one because it was pretty even looking at Pirate leaderboards. So what I do know is that par fours are going to matter. So our top par four performers in the field this week, Scotty, Xander, Cbez. Akshay Batia, Chris Kirk, Shane Lowry, Ludwig Ober, Peter Monotti, Wyndham Clark, and Siwoo. And then lastly, because I still have quite a bit I want to show you all, let's look at par fives. All three measure to this length on the scorecard. You see they do shorten them somewhat, but I think it's safe to say we can just look at the 550 to 600. I mean, four and a half out of five and a half, two and a half out of three and a half, one and a half out of 1.6. It's generally in this 550 to 600 range. Yeah, I mean, look at that. <laughs> I think it's almost a direct duplicate. Fitz, Martin, Spieth, Aaron Rye falls a little bit. So, yeah, we're just going to look at the 550 to 600 par fives. Your top performers in par fives of that range, of that range, Scotty Scheffler, Nick Dunlap, Harris English, Tagala, Dietrich, Zalatoris, Davis, Mackenzie Hughes, Corey Connors, and J Day. Um, all right, good chance to go to Microsoft Excel. Really, really dig in to the data behind Harbor Town and the RBC Heritage. So, in the past five years at Harbor Town, you see that the off the tee has been about fifty percent more important. Then around the green, which again is shocking to me, but the da the data doesn't lie. Here it is, and it's been very very consistent. We don't have an extreme extremely high outlier in this to raise this number, and the around the green has been pretty darn consistent year over year at Harbor Town. We don't have a low number bringing this down. So off the tee clearly has outweighed the around the green in terms of performance. For the past five years. Now the most important shot type clearly Pete Dye of course is the irons and then the putting is um, secondary to the uh, to the irons. And we have a couple of we have a couple of really high outliers or I can't say outliers pretty a couple of high samples and three low ones so I would think it's going to play more so to these two could be wrong but in the two years that it did Look at the off the tee. It was still middling. It was still, you know, pretty consistent with the others. So, I'm. This is why I'm. I'm feeling that off the tee is going to be somewhat important. Somewhat important. Just seeing the data here behind it. Moving to distance and greens and fairways. This this fairways gain number is very very low. Compared, I mean, look at Mexico, a place where fairways just absolutely don't matter because those fairways are a bajillion miles wide. These fairways are extremely narrow, and they still aren't contributing 
a whole lot to upper leaderboard success. Instead, it is in the greens. Now, this number isn't nearly as high as some places. Like, you see Mexico, a 3.34. Wells Fargo is a 4.1. So this number isn't necessarily as high, but it is still the highest contributing factor in this page view at Harbortown. So, and look at how much of a, of a factor it played last year when it was a designated event, a premium event, whatever they called it. I don't remember. I've slept since then. Um, it played very, very important. So, I'm thinking it's going to be greens in this page view. Looking at scoring, you typically will see that the birdies gained raw number is higher than the bogey avoidance. Um, except at courses that are extremely difficult, like the Masters, which we saw last week, the Wells Fargo. Um, this is a pretty normal distribution uh, or difference between the two, about 0.3 to 0.4. Um, been pretty solid except for this one outlier year. And look, it's a low outlier in 2019, and it's a high outlier in 20, uh, 2019 for bogey avoidance. So if we remove the outliers, it really becomes drastic that we want to look at the birdies gained. So pretty on track with that. Par threes, look at there. So a 1.5, but almost 75% of the strokes gained in the par threes around Harbor Town come into this range. So even though there are two that measure to this range and two that measure to this range on the scorecard, very clearly, when the tournament is actually played, it is this range of par threes we want to look at. So that's what we'll be doing. 175 to 200, very clearly. 75% of our strokes gained par threes come into this range here. Moving into par fours, very high number here. Very high number. This is you know close to Masters-esque in terms of par fours. Okay, the 400 to 450 is outweighing the 450 to five, but it's still fairly close. Still fairly close. Look how look how far different 2019 was in this. In fact, I mean, that's a pretty high outlier. If we remove that, it becomes a lot more manageable. This could be a situation where we'd want to look at just these two ranges, but We'd be ignoring the drivable, and we'd be ignoring the other short par four. I don't know if that's correct to do so. So at least early on, you know, in my research, I say early on in the week, it's late Monday night, but early on in my research, I'm kind of leaning to just total par fours, even though this range is a decent bit um, ahead of, of the 450 to 500. And then moving to the par fives, so notice that the 0 to 500 has not been used the last two years. So in the last two years when it was not when they did not shorten a par 5 to less than 500 yards, look at just how much more the 550 to 6s are than the 500 to 550. Just astronomically high. So again, we'll be just focusing on this range of par 5. For what it's worth, just because it's off the corner of my eye, this 175 to 200 proximity, this number here, is rather extremely large. Like If we were to compare that to other full field courses on the PGA Tour, I mean, it's a huge number. So maybe there is something behind the 175 to 200, maybe, but I just didn't see it in the prior leaderboards. But this number is extremely large. So take that for what you will. All right, so there's a look at the extremely uh, you know, dirty, digging in deep into the weeds of the data behind Harbor Town. Let's go ahead and um, let's take a look at last year's mixed condition model that I made for the RBC Heritage, see how it played, what the results were, how predictive they were, and see where we can... Uh, improve. So looking at results, uh, in my top 20, I only had three missed cuts. So that's pretty acceptable. I would be very happy with that. However, the winner was a little bit further down. He was 32nd in my rankings. 
So nothing, not great. He did not have good iron form coming in, for what it's worth. But uh, so a little bit, a little bit of a of an X there. Uh, no credit as I did not have the winner. Uh, Cantley, very popular, top five. You know, Victor Hovland and Cameron Young did not play well. You know, very high in my rankings. Um, Spieth only a ten percent runner up. I had twelfth. You know, decent, uh, decent suggestion there. Surprisingly, Rom was only nine and a half percent projected owned. So this was okay. Um, you know, a little bit of. Uh, I lose a little bit of credit not having the winner in my top 20, but if I were to have, well, this is a no-cut event, but you know, if, if I were to replicate having three missed cuts in my top 20 again, I would accept that. That's, that's pretty solid. I shoot for four to five. I mean, it's golf. Anything happens. So obviously we want zero, but that's, that's pretty unrealistic. So I was happy with this minus not having the winner. So what did I look at? I had 15% approach, makes a whole lot of sense after everything we've seen this evening. 15% in par fours, makes a lot of sense, especially after what we've seen this evening. 10% in the 400 to 450 par four. So not only did I separate out this range, I emphasized this range. So it'll be interesting to see how predictive this was, if that was correct to do. 10% in par fives, okay. 10% off the tee. So I did look at off the tee last year. Good on me. Good job, Nick, from last year. Um, 10% on Poet Trivialis putting. I don't know if we're going to do 10%, but we're definitely going to have the same, you know, Poet Trivialis overseed uh, filter. I look at greens on short courses. I did have 5% around the green. That's kind of what I'm leaning to now. Okay, there's a little bit different of a metric. I used opportunities gained on Pete Dye design. So, again, we'll see how predictive that was. I did look at the 175 to 200 procs, and I looked at just that range of par threes. So how predictive were these? Yeah, I'm pretty mediocre. I'm looking for something, you know, in the 40s, maybe low 50s uh, in terms of this number here to see how predictive they were, because we had 140 players in the field last year. So the approach, not great. And again, our winner, uh, there he is. Our winner had terrible iron form coming in. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes he just has a very hot iron week. But the irons weren't necessarily too predictive. Now the par fours were pretty strong, and the 400 to 450 was fairly strong as well. Par fives fairly strong, but the best one, the most predictive indicator from last year's mixed condition model, off the tee at 42 much better than anything we have seen so far and much better than anything we will see putting eh, kind of mediocre greens actually weren't very good at all around the green not stellar opportunities even less and then these two weren't strong at all you know higher than 60. so i'm not too crazy about that but it's pretty clear we do want to look at this range of par threes we just put five percent in it Surprising to see that the proximity wasn't so strong in terms of predictability, but again, as I've mentioned quite a few times, and I'll say it again, I was just simply incorrect last night to, out to overlook off the tee. Not only is it, you know, data-wise shown to be very darn predictive and, and um, consistent of a, of a metric around Harbor Town, it was, it was also pretty darn predictive last year. So there's a look at last year's mixed condition model. What I look, or you know, what I used, uh, what we could be thinking about differently, and and whatnot. So let's close out of that. We'll end the, the show off. Uh, try to uh, make it as quick as possible, considering we're coming close on time. Let's look at the early look file, and then I do want to show you a little bit of research. So let's take a look at performance at Harbor Town the past five years in these various metrics that we feel confident are going to be important around Harbor Town. So we'll start with off the tee. So your top off the tee players in the past five years at Harbor Town specifically. Scheffler, it's only one time. Cameron Young, Cam Davis has been very good off the tee here. Colin Morikawa has been very good off the tee here. Fitzpatrick, 
Chris Kirk, a little bit less in terms of, of success, but he's been very good off the tee. Cantley, um, Poston. What in the world? Is that a helicopter? Sorry, if you heard that, apologies. That was weird. Um, Batia's only played it one time. It was, it was very bad. He just was not very good. Glover, Corey Connors. So there's a look at your top off the tee players at Harbor Town the past five years. Let's look at approach. Your top iron players at Harbor Town the past five years. So Vincent's been uh, really good with his irons here. Morikawa, Justin Thomas, Cantlay, Grio. A little bit less in terms of success, but he's been good with the irons. Spieth, Finau, Connors. Look at Henley. Henley's been all or nothing. He has missed the cut three of his five tries, but still has an average finish of 52nd because he has two top tens. He is quite literally all or nothing here. Uh, Justin Rose has been good here. Cameron Young, our defending champion. Fitzpatrick has been fairly solid. Xander. Ricky is only one for three here. Interesting. Sungjae. So there's your top iron players. Let's look at greens. I do think those are going to be fairly important. Greens gained. Colin, four for four. Garnett's been okay here, I suppose, and especially since he's going to be minimally priced. I don't know if he is the minimum price, but I can't imagine he's going to be even in the upper sixes. Connors, Xander, Spieth, Fitz. Look at all these players who have had lots of success around Harbor Town. They are gaining quite a bit in the greens. Sanjay Rogers a little bit less so. Hadwin, Cantley, Shraka, Tommy, English, Harris English. It's three for four here. All right. Looking at birdies and then par fours and par fives. That probably will be it because I want to see uh, or want to show you all some research. So your top birdies gained players, Harbor Town, Cam Young, Cam Davis, Cantley, Finau, Cebes, three for three. Average finish inside the top 30. Sam Burns has been pretty good here. Fitz, defending champion, JT, Xander, Spieth, if you're not afraid of the wrist. I don't know how you can't be after last week, but... Tommy, Corey Connors, JT, Poston, Zvinson, Morikawa, okay. Par fours, par fives, and that, that'll be the end of the early look file, or at least the uh, looking at who's done well here. Par fours, my goodness, Taylor Moore dominated them. It's only one time. Cantley, Seat Tagala two for two. Poston again, three for five. Finau, Cam Young, Sebez, Matt Fitz, Fitzpatrick. Corey Connors has been great here. Jordan Spieth, of course. Tommy. Xander. A little bit less in terms of upper leaderboard success. He's just been kind of consistent. Average finish of 44th. He is 3 for 3, though. <clears throat> Rose. Harmon. All right. Lastly, par fives. Actually, let's just take a look at the far, par fives. 550 to 600. That would make the most sense. It's stupid. So par fives. 550 to 6. Cam Davis. Spieth. Cam Young. Scotty last year, Cantley, Fitz, Fleetwood, Colin, Sam Burns, Vincent again, Xander again, Brent Todd, Fino, JT. All right, I'll sort this back on the average finish. I will end the show off with showing you a little bit of the research that I have out on social media. We'll start with winter form. So the tournaments that winners played coming into the RBC Heritage. Nothing really stood out to me, but what I want to show you, these tournaments that are highlighted, uh, uh, these tournaments that are highlighted, these are short courses. These are courses labeled as less than 7,200 yards per Fantasy National. Now, Fitzpatrick only played one before the RBC Heritage and didn't play it well, clearly. But look at Jordan Spieth, runner-up on a short course. Stuart Sink in 2021, top 20, top 20. Webb Simpson, top five on a short course. 
CT Payne, a little bit of an outlier here. Um, he had made the cut at two of them. And interestingly enough, the, the players in 2019 was listed as less than 7,200. I can just go by what's listed in Fantasy National. But he did, he did make the cut at two of the shorter courses. Honda, I'm willing to excuse because it's very, very difficult. So I'm willing to excuse that one. He's a little bit of an outlier here. But Wesley Bryan, a top five. Jim Furyk in 2015, a top 10. So majority of these guys had, you know, a top 10 or, or maybe multiple top 20s in the case of Stuart Sink on these short courses in that calendar year. So with that being said, the short courses that have been played in 2024, the Sony, the uh, American Express, and... Um, the Cognizant Classic and Pebble Beach. Those four tournaments. I'll say them again. The Sony Open, the American Express, the Cognizant Classic, and Pebble Beach. Those four tournaments are the the courses that have been on, or the, those are the tournaments that have been on short courses. So it probably would behoove you to take a look at who played well at those four tournaments because uh, generally speaking, uh, the winners of the RBC Heritage had had some decent form on a short course earlier in that calendar year. Something else that I want to bring your bring to your all's attention. I'll do the the winner matrix last. Take a look at the um, form of the players in the immediate preceding tournament. Now, majority of the time, these players have been playing the Masters as the RBC Heritage is customarily the week after the Masters. So we don't get that data. It is pro proprietary. But look at the data we do get. Every single one of them gained off the tee the week or the tournament before playing the RBC Heritage. So another reason why off the tee probably is more important than what I was giving it credit for. So take that into consideration. Pretty good off the tee form coming in. Then lastly, I'll show you the winner matrix, which is a performance of a champion before they won the... Oh, goodness, what is this? Uh, oh, that's why. Sorry. Um, this is their performance leading up to their win. So you see Matt Fitzpatrick missed the cut the year prior, but he had a top five. He had several other top 15 or a couple other top 15s. Jordan Spieth didn't play the year before, but again, had some top 15s in the past. Stuart Sink, pretty, pretty poor recent form, but earlier in his career had a top 15 and then a top 25. Webb Simpson's always been good here. And then wins. C.T. Pan. You just mentioned that you'd never heard of C.T. Pan. I mean, even C.T. Pan had a decent amount of um, success. You know, nothing elite, but you know, a top twenty-five and made the cut his first try, and then comes and wins. Now Satoshi Kodaira and Wesley Bryan. Sorry, I'm changing the sizes here. These two are the outliers in this. They won the first time they played. But almost everybody else had an amount of success. You know, generally about a top 15 or so, give or take. You know, uh, C.G. Payne was a top 25. But generally speaking, most of these players had a top 15 or so. So I don't think um, prior success is mandatory. We just saw, you know, these two. Uh, yeah, those numbers are representative of where they placed that year. So MC, miscut. Um, Fitzpatrick finished fourth in 2021. Spieth finished 68th in 2020, etc. The reason why I don't think um, uh, course history is paramount like it is at the Masters, even though they'd have some amount of success, look at the performance, you know, in the in the years, you know, the recent years to their win. A missed cut, didn't play, 68, 62nd, missed cut. It's not 
extremely paramount. Yes, you'd like to have some experience here. It'll have a little bit of weight um, come Wednesday night, you know, in my course value when I do my rankings, but nothing to the level of the Masters, per se. Um, nothing to the level of uh, the Memorial when we're, when we're there later on this summer. Uh, it'll have a little bit, but in terms of your outrights, any wagers that you make, you do want to you do want to see if a if a player has at least had an amount of success in their career. Uh, a lot of the winners are not highly ranked in the world ranking. Hey, good evening, Derek. Thanks for jumping in chat. Um, let's see. Uh, you might be right, uh, especially like CT Payne, Kadira. These four, I know, were were pretty long, pretty big long shots when they won. Webb Simpson has generally played Harbor Town well. I, I wouldn't know his OWGR on off the bat. Now, Fitz, Fitz would have been fairly high in the OWGR. Spees always, well, I can't say always because he had that spell there where he was in a drought. So you might be right, um, you know, in general terms that they weren't big uh, or very high on the OWGR. You might be right with that, especially here in the middle years. You know, say 2019 down to maybe 2016, 17. Good observation there, Derek. Um, so at least with your outright wagers, you might want to you might want to make sure that a guy has at least had a top performance at some point. It doesn't have to be recent. I mean, look at Spieth. He wins in 2022. It was all the way back in 2015 when he had his top. You know, when he had his his big finishes here. But at least you might want to double check and make sure that they've had at least an amount of success if you're uh, partaking in wagers. Um, probably golfers that put putting well and good. So honestly, putting has not been a big factor here. Not not consistently. Now off the tee has been, and that is what I was that is what I was mistaken about last night and corrected this evening. I did not think conceptually that RBC Heritage would lend itself to off the tee very much, but the data data doesn't lie. Here it is. It is it is you know, 50% more important than around the green, and the putting has actually been full field, or 3%. It's only 3% more important than the average full field course. Not to say that you ignore it, but it's definitely not going to have the weight that uh, some of the other courses, say like the Valspar, say like the Honda, uh, other places have uh, been, uh, the American Express, places of that. It's definitely not going to carry as much weight as those places. I am much more concerned with iron play off the tee, thanks to the data. Um, around the green a little bit because these greens are very small so I mean players are going to have to rely on their around the green game regardless uh, yep yep you're right we saw that in the GCSAA tournament fact sheet last night um, two and a half inches last year in terms of rough one and a quarter length is what it's listed for the GCSAA tournament fact sheet so yep um but that is a look. I wonder if some of these lower ranked players use this tournament as practice for something bigger. Again, I think I think it was you, uh, Brobarian, that mentioned last week. You know, if you were able to find a way to, to quantify the unquantifiable, you know, to get in the mindset of players, if you're able to quantify that, come reach out to me. We're going to make a lot of money if we can do that. Um, it's to to speculate on that is is uh, I think. Um, honestly, I think it's 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 detrimental. I think it's detrimental to try to to try to get into the headspace of a player. Just look at the data uh, and trust what the data is showing you. That's the way I look at it. Then again, I'm biased because I'm a statistician, so I'm I'm always or I'm naturally inclined to lean towards stats anyway. But we've been going for a while. I will bring us back to the early look file. And the performance of players at the RBC Heritage at Harbor Town the past five years. Um, I want to thank uh, Tony, Barbarian, and Derek for jumping in chat. 
very much appreciated. Um, uh, always a pleasure. I love what I do. Uh, looking, uh, taking a, an in-depth look at sports statistics, giving you a statistician and data analyst view of what he sees. Not always right. Uh, again, I was uh, clearly saying last night that off the tee didn't matter and then had to Maya culpa and, and correct myself tonight. So uh, not always correct. We'll own when I'm not correct, but we'll give you an honest view of what I see as a statistician um, and, a, and a data analyst. So thanks to you three for jumping in chat. Thanks to everybody else out there who tunes in, watches, listens, supports the channel by liking the videos, commenting, and subscribing. I always appreciate it. Wouldn't be able to do this without your all support. It means a lot. Uh, for all of the wagers that you have made so far this week for the RBC Heritage, for all of the wagers you're thinking about making this week for the RBC Heritage, and until I see you tomorrow night for the Corrales Punta Cana full show, may all your bets be profitable.